Yeah. 
was, again, stereotypical um, images of in my head, again, based on films, Hollywood, and also, you know, textbooks. Let's just have a quick look at Dennis Owens. So Dennis Owens are an extinct species of hominid and a close relative of humans. They're a recent addition to the human family tree. Scientists first identified Dennis Owen remains from a cave in Siberia in 2010. Denisovans may have ranged from Siberia to Southeast Asia during the last Ice Age. DNA evidence suggests Denisovans are related to both Neanderthals and modern humans, and may have interbred with both. That's interesting, so I beg your pardon, they're not from Africa at all. Or, well, I suppose we all originated from Africa at one point. Denisovans were primarily around Russia and, uh, I suppose, India and China, or what we know today as that. Very interesting. So they lived between 300,000 and 400,000 years ago. They expanded into Eurasia and then split those that moved west into
ancestors
is the day where Alaska meets the very end tip of Russia. Um, and of course, you have to imagine that in the Ice Age, the ice from the Arctic would have been significantly further south than where we see uh, the glaciers of the Arctic today. And so you would have literally been able to walk from Russia to Alaska and down into America without too many problems. So let's have a look at some of the tools that we used. And I think this is probably um, one of the more important topics of the Stone Age, as it's the stone tools that we used that gave the age its name. So much of what we know about life in the Stone Age and Stone Age people comes from the tools they left behind. Hammerstones are some of the earliest and simplest stone tools. Prehistoric humans used hammerstones to chip other stones into sharp etched flakes. They also used hammerstones to break apart nuts, seeds and bones and to grind clay into pigment. Archaeologists refer to these earliest stone tools as the older one toolkit. Older one sto stone tools dating back nearly 2.6 million years were first discovered in Tanzania in the 1930s by archaeologist Louis Most of the makers of older one tools were right-handed, leading experts to believe that handedness evolved very early in human history. Interesting. I always, I always um, heard or, or believe that there was um, the reason that most humans nowadays are right-handed was due to a certain taboo about left-handedness. Um, back in the Middle Ages, and perhaps it was something to do with uh, some sort of religious meaning or, or something similar. Um, I know it does have an, uh, uh, an impact on the dominant side of your brain and the two sides of your brain being associated to different um, skills. Um, so the left side of your brain being a very logical and um, uh, thinking side and the left side of your brain controls the right side of your body. So your right hand was more for, um, uh, for logic and, and that sort of thing. Whereas your left hand and the right side of your brain was for art and expressiveness and creativity. Um, forgive me, I took psychology as an A-level, but that was ten years ago now, so uh, it might be a little bit rusty. But nevertheless, it's interesting to see that the way that I imagine societies, how our society evolved in right-handedness was perhaps wrong, and that even in our early prehistory, humans were predominantly right-handed. Interesting. As technology progressed, humans created increasingly sophisticated stones included hand axes, spear points for hunting large game, scrapers which could be used to prepare animal hides, and awls for shredding plant fibers and making clothing. Not all Stone Age tools were made of stone. Groups of humans experimented with 
other raw materials, including bone, ivory, and antler, especially later on in the Stone Age. Lovely. Well, let's have a look at uh, another section here. So we've got Stone Age food. So people during the Stone Age first started using clay pots to cook food and store things. The oldest pottery known was found archaeological site in Japan. Fragments of clay containers used in food preparation at the site may be up to 16,500 years old. Stone Age food varied over time and from region to region, but included the foods typical of hunter-gatherers, meats, fish, eggs, grasses, vegetables, seeds, and nuts. Very raw foods we have here. Not very many cultivated foods. Certainly milks and cheeses weren't around at this sort of time. And perhaps some cultivated uh, wheats, um, barleys, as of yet. Not until the fertile boomerang was civilized anyway. While humans had the technology to create spears and other tools to use as weapons, there's little evidence for Stone Age wars. Most researchers think the population density in most areas was low enough to avoid violent conflict between groups. Stone Age may have started later when humans began settling an established economic currency in the form of agricultural goods. Interesting. So, I think it's a, an interesting point that the density of populations would have meant that there would be less conflict. I think that's a, a fairly uh, easy point to see. But also, to start and I think that is again quite a, an understandable point considering wars for early humans would have been a case of um, you know this group of people has this but we don't have this but we want this and we don't want to have to give them anything for it so let's go and take it actually not too different to how wars nowadays start, but this would have been uh, far less civilised. Um, so, we'll have a little look at Stone Age art, and then I think we'll pick up on a couple of extra bits that I wanted to have a look at on Wikipedia. So the oldest known Stone Age art dates back to a later Stone Age period known as the Upper Paleolithic, around 40,000 years ago. Art began to appear around this time in parts of Europe, the Near East, Asia and Africa. The earliest known depiction of a human Stone Age art is a small ivory sculpture of a female figure with exaggerated breasts and genitalia. The figurine is named the Venus of Olfels after the cave in Germany in which it was discovered. It's about 40,000 years old. symbols and signs into walls of caves during the Stone Age using hammer stones and stone chisels. These early murals, called petroglyphs, depict scenes of animals. Some may have been used as early maps showing trails, rivers, landmarks, astronomical markers, and symbols distance travelled. Shamans too may have created cave art 
constructing, constructing shelters and homes in different ways, using different methods. You see, a lot of what I uh, have always, I suppose, grown up to believe purely from, again, popular media, is that Stone Age people were essentially So this first um, point is perhaps the one that stands out to me the most, but to think that even before um, we discovered to civilize, uh, to settle down and civilize and areas and, and uh, start agriculture, there were those that were already making structures with rooms of timber. And this was thousands of years before any sort of civilizations arose around the Middle East in Egypt. It's remarkable stuff. So this is the Scara Bray in Scotland, Europe's most complete Neolithic village. And you can see the different uh, areas in which they would have lived. Um, so while we consider it a village, it almost looks like one structure. Especially, I suppose, in the Ice Age, this would have been a particularly cold place to live. Um, as it still is a fairly cold place now in the winter. But it's um, remarkable that it's remained in such good condition. I'd like to visit that. Adaba, which I believe is the capital of Ethiopia, um, and this valley here, where uh, not only humans, but I believe uh, uh, the chimpanzees, um, normal chimpanzees or ch general chimpanzees, as well as bonobo chimpanzees evolved, um, those being our current closest living ancestors survived into this era. So, um, a very important place, and here I suppose you can see the, the splits. Here the chimpanzee splits, where our closest living simian relatives split from our evolutionary line. And it was only two million years later the stone started walking on two legs, so only 500,000 years perhaps, and two million years before fire was used. So perhaps, although fire is considered by many to be one of the catalysts for our evolution, speeding up. Stone tools are perhaps the most important original um, uh, evolu or, or tool that, that led us on the path to where we are today. Very interesting. Um, something else 
Exaggerated by the quite uh, nice picture of what Stone Age life may have been like. So for now, we'll leave it here and I'll catch up with all of you soon. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day.